the results of this experiment were copacetic, copacetic. What does this word mean? Well, to find out, we have to go back to 1919, an author called Irvine Batchelor. He wrote a book about Abraham Lincoln called The Man of the Ages. And in that book is the first recorded usage of this word. In it, he's describing one of the characters, Mrs. Lucan, and he says of her, there was one other word in her lexicon which was used in the nature of a jewel to be used only on special occasions. It was the word copacetic. And you'll see the spelling is slightly different. The author of one of the original uses of this word is telling people it should be used on a special occasion. It certainly should not be used in academic work to describe an experiment. For those of you who are still wondering what this word means, it just means excellent. I am increasingly coming across students who are using obscure words to try and make their work sound more impressive. This comes from an understandable place. At school, you will have been told that having a wide ranging vocabulary is an important skill. And it is, but only because it allows you to use the most precise term to convey meaning to the reader. It doesn't give you license to just load up thesaurus.com and pick any single obscure word or synonym that you can find. Here are some of the advantages and some of the cons of using fancy words. They might sound clever, but once you get beyond that, they can be confusing for the reader if the reader hasn't heard of them before. They can be unfamiliar to the reader. They might have heard them used, but not in that context. You can get them wrong, which is even more embarrassing. And actually, they don't really indicate any academic or intellectual ability. I want to show you a sentence that I wrote in my master's on an essay about biosecurity. It's this sentence here. This sentence is problematic. Let me read it in full. The coalescence of private actors around public health, particularly in the US, can be examined through Project BioShield, which allocated $5.6 billion worth of funding into research and vaccine stockpiling, a move which vitalized ailing biotech companies. Now, this is a dreadful sentence because it's got a lot going on in it. It's got a lot of data and it's actually got two different points. It needs fixing. But let's look at the fancy words used in here. The first one is obviously coalescence. Now, coalescence refers to things coming together. And I was trying to use it here to talk about these private actors coming around the issue of public health. Private actors was just a couple of fancy words for companies. If you've watched my video on adverbs, you know I like to cut adverbs. And if we just continue to cut the non-important information from this sentence, we start to get to the bare bones of what we want to include. Before I any go any further though, have a look at the words vitalized and ailing. Now I've wrapped those in green because those are actually precise terms that I wanted to use and they are good synonyms to use there. Vitalized is a good word to use when talking about companies getting money from the government. It's giving them life, it's giving them lifeblood. The money is the lifeblood of the company. And ailing refers to companies that are ill. So those two uh, synonyms there work very well. So I'm gonna keep those in the sentence. Once we take all of this information and rewrite it, we get a much clearer sentence. Project BioShield allocated $5.6 billion for research and vaccine stockpiling. This vitalized ailing biotech companies and made them part of public health policy. Sentences have been split up and the fancy words have been taken out and it's been made much clearer. So in your own work, have a look for these fancy terms that you might have included to try and make the, the work sound really impressive. Or if you are rooting for the thesaurus, make sure you are using the most precise term that communicates the most important information to the reader and it doesn't actually confuse the reader while they're reading it. I've been Dr. Joe Thorogood. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on Remarkable.